Good evening, everyone, and welcome to evening prayer on this first evening of Holy Week, Monday night. It is good for us to be together in this digital means today uh, as we take a break from this week and we gather ourselves around God's Word and in a time of prayer to orient our lives throughout this Holy Week. I hope you had an opportunity over the last week or so uh, to be able to listen to Pastor Lauren's video on how to set up a home uh, worship space for yourself. Um, I've got mine that's set up right here behind me, and I hope you'll take some time this week to send us pictures of your home prayer space, a place that you can set apart uh, as we attempt to do this Holy Week in the midst of our own homes. Um, it's certainly a, a challenging time for us to be apart from one another, uh, but I'm grateful that you've taken time out of your busy schedule or out of your suddenly very open schedule uh, to be together for this time this evening. Uh, and so I ask that you find a comfortable place. Uh, you can take an opportunity to throw this feed up onto a big screen if you want to, and we can sit back in a time uh, for prayer gathered around God's Word. Today, as always, we gather as we live. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, your Son chose the path that led to pain before joy, and to the cross before glory. Plant his cross in our hearts, so that in its power and love, we may come at last to joy and glory, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading for today comes from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations he will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirits to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Looking over the appointed lectionary text for this Monday of Holy Week, I was all ready to go and prepared to reflect on the gospel lesson appointed for today. The familiar story of Mary Magdalene anointing Jesus with oil before his death and washing his feet with her hair. But seeing this lesson from Isaiah, I stopped in my tracks. Something about it was just captivating to me today. And I, I better understood why when I was reading a commentator's reflection on this text that described Isaiah and all prophetic literature as meaning-making literature for communities under siege. <laughs> well, it sounds like Isaiah is speaking a word for our time. Under siege. By worry, isolation, fear, uncertainty. Disillusioned is again and again reopening dates get pushed back. Under siege from a microscopic killer with asymptomatic carriers and a lack of resources and the bureaucracy of those who are offering support under siege. 
Isaiah is a word for our time. This lesson from Isaiah 42 tells of the servant, one whom we have often called the suffering servant. He's described as a bruised reed and a dimly burning wick. The suffering servant is the one who will bring God's justice to all nations. But in the text itself, the identity of this servant's a mystery. Some have said that at the time these prophetic words were written, the suffering servant was likely a prayer of hope rather than a person of history. Christians have often identified with this suffering servant as Christ, the servant who laid down his life that justice and hope may be known throughout the nations and the ages. In the midst of bleak times, we look towards hope. We look towards Christ. In this Holy Week, as we journey with Christ towards the cross, towards his death, and towards the empty tomb, we can reclaim once again the mystery of the suffering servant. Or perhaps in our own lives, we can know the servant in the midst of suffering. I have been delighted and inspired by the stories all around us of servants in suffering. I've been amazed by the ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things to spread love, hope, and justice in the midst of this COVID-19 siege. One of my favorite actors, John Krasinski, who played Jim Halpert in The Office, started doing a video series the other week called Some Good News, where he highlights stories of hope in the midst of these troubled times from factories that have shifted production to medical supplies, to teachers who are going the extra mile for students, to John himself interviewing a little girl who is devastated that she wouldn't be able to see Hamilton live as she was stuck at home. And then John arranging for the original cast to surprise her and sing the title song of the musical to her over Zoom. You know, the world is under siege in so many ways but it's full of servants in suffering. We have the opportunity throughout this Holy Week to embrace this servant call. Each time you pray for a neighbor, each mask you sew for first responders and essential workers, each call you make to check in with someone who's alone, each grocery store run you make for those who are immunocompromised, each time you stay home to flatten the curve, you embrace this servant call. This call to be a servant in the midst of suffering that is central to this Holy Week. Even if the only way you can serve is to serve you by remembering that you are enough, that you are not defined by your productivity in the midst of global trauma, that you are God's beloved, that you are worthy of life and dignity, and that, as we will hear again boldly this Friday, God thinks you're worth dying for. Remember these things, and you will have served in suffering. You will have built up God's kingdom here on earth, and you will have lived into this ancient prayer of hope. The suffering servant is a healer and a liberator. So may the servant's life be our life this week and every week. May we walk with Christ from wherever we are, Take up the mantle of service today and breathe new life into these prophets' bold words. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other nor my praise to idols. See the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Amen. Let us offer our prayers together. God through Christ has given us as a covenant to the people to heal and to liberate through prayer and work. We gather the concerns of the church and the world and hold them in our hearts before our Creator and Redeemer. Lord God, equip all your faithful people 
for the work of mission. When we are empty-handed, give us partners in ministry. Help us to speak boldly of your promises without reservation or fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you breathe life into the dust of the earth. Bless the land and all who work it. Bring relief to areas of drought and famine. Send healing rains and cooling breezes to places scorched by sun and heat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, support and protect all healthcare workers and all who serve the sick and those at high risk of infection. We remember in particular refugees and those serving them today. Reinforce all agencies that support public health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your grace is sufficient to bring wholeness to human weakness. Restore hope to those suffering hardships, persecutions, and calamities. Strengthen all who are fragile in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we lift up to you aloud or from within the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, heal our self-centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only when vi the virus threatens us. Open ways beyond timidity and fear that too easily ignore our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you equip disciples throughout the ages to proclaim your kingdom, whether they Lead us by faith until every weakness of this world has been made perfect in the power of your everlasting glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, the hope of all in need, pour your spirit upon us that we may be instruments of your justice and compassion, a light to the nations and a living promise of your new heaven and new earth. Amen. We conclude this evening with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously kept me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. <laughs> Friends, we're trying to do Holy Week from home where there might be imperfect interruptions into our lives, like my dog whapping her tail against the table in the midst of all of this. But this night and throughout this Holy Week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I pray that you'll have some time to join us again at 7 p.m. tomorrow night on Facebook Live. <laughs> Aria, hush. <laughs> join us on Facebook Live through whatever is happening in your homes, and particularly in your homes. We invite you to send pictures of your home prayer spaces. Um, you can send those to the church with the hashtag Digital Holy Week MLC. And you'll find liturgies and more information about our Digital Holy Week services for the great three days on our website, MuhlenbergLutheran.org slash Digital Holy Week. Friends, I pray you have a blessed week and look forward to seeing you again soon. <laughs>